Welcome to my channel. Obviously, if you've been here, welcome back. I talk about theories of the universe, um, basically theories about uh, um, how you can understand the universe, how you can understand yourself, and interesting exploratory topics. That's why I call this channel Visionary Ventures. Okay, so I'm excited to have in, uh, some videos in mind I want to record. I'm going to go visit a former classmate to help organize a 30-year high school reunion. Um, but I want to record some videos. I want to record this video about um, something about story structure. Uh, and I'll probably talk about Dramatica because it uh, relates. Um, you can, these are examples you can understand uh, in your real, in terms of your real context of watching movies, how Dramatica fits in. And uh, I also want to do a separate video about um, my own uh, construction of the Star Trek timeline. Um, for those who aren't Star Trek fans, maybe it, it'll help. There will be spoilers. I can't help it because I'm explaining a timeline. Um, but for uh, So maybe you'd like to uh, enjoy it anyway. Maybe it'll go over your heads. Um, but the heck, uh, um, this is something I had done quite a few years back, over 20 years ago. And I'd been a Star, I'm still a Star Trek fan, but um, I had been figuring it out based on references in the TV series. But what's especially interesting, why I want to make this video, um, <clears throat> is because it's different from the official canon timeline that had been established after um, so many decades of, or uh, three something decades of um, there not being an official canon and uh, loose things happening here and there. It's it's like an exploration of how they evolved into a timeline. And I'm what I'm presenting is a, a somewhat consistent timeline established in the original series that slowly. I want to establish what it would look, you know, um, how it had been formed. It's consistent, but yet um, also mention that there were jumps and changes. Um, so basically, it's also also like a, almost like an alternative timeline. Um, so I've been quite familiar with um, alternative timelines in Star Trek, the Star Trek franchise, before the new stuff came out, like the J.J. Abrams movies. So that'd be interesting, and. Uh, so there's the uh, there's this video there's that Star Trek timeline video and then um, I don't remember what the uh, oh oh another video short video about my tendency as a child to uh, make notes and make lists and so forth and how that helped me and how that evolved okay so in this episode <laughs> I have to remember which topic I'm on um, as much as I like to delve into those other ones. Um, all right, this topic is about uh, Dramatica and the relationship um, subplot that seems to crop up. Okay, what is Dramatica? Uh, Dramatica was developed, and there are videos I've um, already uploaded and put on this channel already about Dramatica. Uh, it is a theory that's testable against uh, films you watch. Um, it, there's a software that uh, is that um, there's a software based on the theory. Uh, both were developed by two um, filmmakers um, applying psychology, and I think that's the the trick that actually got got it to work. Because other uh, uh, um, in contrast to uh, books about screenwriting and television writing, I'll lump them together. I'll just say screenwriting. Um, where it, the books about screenwriting and theories uh, like um, Save the Cat and so forth, they're just regurgitating tropes and um, tendencies writers had when writing movies. Dramatica took a whole different approach. Um, they, they took a step back and just tried to figure out, well, how does the mind work its way through a problem? And the mind working its way through a problem becomes expressed instinctively in the writer's mind as a whole movie. So it so there's the idea of a, a story mind, like the movie itself has 
the story, the, the movie itself is really an intricate network of themes that fit together uh, towards an argument and, um, and two sides in the argument and so forth, and which one is better in this context, in the context of the story being told. Um, and so it doesn't rely on tropes. It's like there's a story mind arguing for a certain point of view and which specific themes are at play and which are not. And that helped me as a writer. Um, so that's what Dramatica is. So there are four different perspectives in the Dramatica theory um, that each fully told, fully expressed story has four different perspectives going simultaneously through the movie. And um, there are quarters, and the movie is split into quarters. There are not three acts, there are actually four acts. Um, so approximately every quarter of the movie, um, you have a turning point, or a, people call it an inciting incident or a, a plot twist or something, a major plot twist about every quarter of the movie. And that's structural. That's not just some trope. Um, I'll get to my main point in a moment. Um, it's structural. It's because uh, the theory works on quads of four units. And during the course of the movie, it the mind has to work itself through with a problem it has to or con, a conflict has to work its conflict through in context of each of the four different units and so that's why there are four large scale units and of course you have four different perspectives going so there are four different parallel arcs story arcs so what are the four story arcs or dramatic call as dramatic calls them through lines there's the I perspective, that's the main character perspective. The personal exploration experience, I guess I should say personal experience in the story. And then there's the impact character, which is um, a character you don't bond with. You're seeing whole, you're experiencing the whole movie through the eyes of the main character, but you're seeing this impact character um, who has some resemblance to you. That's where the um, you and I are alike moment comes from that happens in quite a few movies like for example Raiders of the Lost Ark there's a specific reason functional reason why that moment is there it's to compare and contrast the main character with the impact character um, even though Belloc is a rival he's also an impact character that's on a that's not the objective story perspective the objective story perspective is all the characters like a chess piece it's like World War II or something that's a whole canvas or something, all the characters interplaying with what people would typically call the story. Um, and Jaws, it's uh, the shark and he's bite, he's eating people and so forth. That's the whole story. But um, the impact character, the, the, the I'll call the actor, the character is playing two different parts. One part is active and has cer a certain function and role in the objective story and he or she has a certain function in uh, as the impact character or as the main character. Uh, for example, that's what dif differentiates the hero, uh, well, I shouldn't say hero, the, the, the protagonist from the main character. The two are not necessarily the same. If you look at the Terminator, um, you're seeing the eyes, through, you're seeing through the, the story, through the eyes, you're experiencing the story through the, of the Terminator, through the eyes of um, Sarah Con uh, Connor, uh, I almost forgot her name for a moment, um, but she is not the protagonist. Um, the protagonist is arguably uh, the impact character. Um, the, I, I, the protagonist is arguably um, Kyle Reese. Kyle Reese has gone back in time. The protagonist's role is strictly in the objective story about this Terminator that's going, well, I won't give away the plot, but um, the Terminator and threat and all that and all the characters involved and so forth. That's the objective story. So Kyle Reese is the protagonist trying to resolve that dilemma or that, that uh, problem. Um, and then he's also the impact character. Uh, and of course there's a fourth subjective story. I won't get a subjective story arc through line, but that, so you have four. So I won't get into that, but I'm principally talking about the main character and the impact character, which has have nothing to do with the objective story. Um, 
they have a relationship. It could be romantic. It could be um, rivalry. It could be father and son. It could be whatever it is. Um, <clears throat> there's a relationship that develops between them. It doesn't have to be romantic again. Relation between them. And the reason why it's not just to have titties on camera or something. It's not to attract women to romantic love interests or something. It's specifically the main character, the audience, is seeing this other character with similarities uh, in terms of um, approaches that the other character takes, but also differences and comparing. And the impact character, what's the impact character, what impact is the impact character making? The impact is forcing is that it's forcing the main character you the audience to wonder should I change how I deal like change my philosophical philosophical attitude about something or um, change how I approach problem solving something like that or should I stick with how I'm doing it and one or the other changes. They can't both change. One has to be steadfast. In other words, um, sticking to may wave, he or she may waver, but um, sh uh, ultimately uh, stick with either how, I'll just say he, um, how he's been dealing with these kinds of problems, this kind of dilemma, or drastically change. Now, a uh, uh, very familiar change in approach is uh, Luke Skywalker in the end of the uh, episode four of Star Wars, A New Hope, um, where he's been testing himself, testing other people, testing his abilities, demonstrating his abilities and saying he's the best, you know, essentially he's the best or he's, he's uh, competitive. And uh, this impact character, Obi-Wan Kenobi, um, said, uh, tra trains him in the ways of the force and uh, Listen to his lines. He says, "He says, um, open up with your feelings. Trust your feelings. The force is with you, and so forth. You are strong in the force. Um, the force will be with you always." And so, it, towards the end of the movie, he hears Obi Wan Kenobi's voice. Uh, it's funny. You can um, you can take it a certain way. You can sort of imagine it as him not really being a force ghost, but being like Jiminy Cricket. He's dead. And this voice talks to Luke and reminds him. It's like, uh, you could take it as Luke is remembering what Obi-Wan Kenobi had said. So in the climactic moment, uh, he they're at, in the Death Star trench. They're trying to blow up the Death Star. And he... He, uh, he hears Obi-Wan Kenobi saying, um, trust your feelings, and he shuts off his targeting computer system, and he just relies on instinct, and he, he, there's where confidence comes up. He says, no, I, 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 I just keep my mind um, quiet, and I'm very aware of what I'm doing, and he trusts himself, and he makes the target, bullseyes the target. So... Um, that's an example, a great example of the impact of the impact character on the main character. It's not necessarily the antagonist, that's the objective story function. Um, so there's this relationship in movies and it has to be that way to be full, a fully expressed story. So I wanted to, uh, share that with you, um, Oh, also, uh, what were prompted this was actually a video about a Star Trek The Next Generation episode. And um, uh, specifically, they were talking about, in one episode, um, uh, what's the name of it? Third season, uh, I, I can't remember offhand, but it was some kind of uh, a scene at the, in the opening teaser before the opening credits. You know, you, they used to have stuff like this in TV back when they had broadcast TV. Um, they would have a, a, a teaser, like an inciting incident, and then they would have a commercial break, and then they would have a they would have four acts or whatever of the episode itself. Uh, of course, commercial breaks in between. Um, and as a child growing up, I would watch Star Trek. I would watch the original series um, before the Next Generation premiered, and it was typically the the original series, the trail the. I keep saying trailers. The the teasers 
uh, like the inciting incidents would typically be on the bridge or it would be, um, okay, here's the mission. Here's uh, uh, like in Mission Impossible or something. Here's the mission. You've got to do this. Da, 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 da. And they're off on their mission in commercial. And then the uh, opening theme. Um, or in Star Trek, very often um, they're beaming down and something, some creature attacks or something and somebody's killed. Oh boy, uh, this is what we're presented with. Ooh, interesting. And then there's a, uh, there's um like a cliffhanger and then there's an opening theme and then after the clip in act one then uh, uh after the commercial break um they have they try and deal with it through the four acts i was used to that so when um in the next generation um especially during the third season onward it seemed weird that they would have like some kind of character moment or scene that didn't seem to have anything to do with the objective story. Like, uh, and this one that I know these episode titles sort of by heart, but not when I'm in front of a camera in this one, um, it's Jordy and he's on a, um, simulation that he's programmed himself in order to be on this date with some woman, a uh, coworker. And he set it all up. He spent so much time and it's just them in this wonderful beach simulation and it's not going well for her and uh, not going well. The date isn't going well. And then all of a sudden it shifts to another, uh, the next scene, which is um, what I would now call having learned about Dramatica, the, uh, dr the objective story where they, they come upon this ship and it's derelict and da 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 da, and then they get trapped in um, this. Um, they get trapped in a. It's called booby trap. They get trapped in this area of space and so forth. And then through the episode, there were moments with Jordy and um, and this other woman, uh, simulation simulated woman of an engineer, and the two are talking with each other and so forth. So. There were episodes like that where I would feel, why are they opening without that dramatic? Why are they opening with this scene, like intimate character scene, when the original series and I, what I've been used to was this big hook, right? Like, um, like in one episode, um, I'm blanking on this episode. It's pressure under the camera, but um, one episode, uh, oh, uh, cause and effect. Uh, the Enterprise blows up right before the opening credits. Wow, that gets your attention. And then after that, then the rest of the episode has a series of um, has a series of copied sequences where um, da da da, which ends with the Enterprise blowing up. Da 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 da. The Enterprise blows up, and there it's looping. Time is looping where they're repeating the same day or the same hours over and over again. Well. That opening part with the Enterprise blowing up right before the opening credits, that's a hook. Um, I associated with the opening teaser before the credits as being a hook. You want to hook your audience in. And why are they starting with this character scene? Well, now I'm more familiar with it. And now I can see how the two themes were parallel. What they were really doing, I can see with aid of Dramatica theory, I can see these two were parallel. It's the same theme, but from two different perspectives. Um, the whole point of the episode Booby Trap was to um, not put your faith or not try too hard in terms of technology, just be yourself. And so uh, that's what resolves the episode at the end, uh, both in terms of the objective story and in terms of what um, Jordy learns himself. In fact, Jordy learns that and picks up on it from his personal experience as the main character. And then he's able to uh, come up with a solution to solve the objective story. That's very common in movies and I suppose other story, other in TV stories. Um, he figures TV dramas anyway. Um, so then they apply that to the objective story and they're able to get out of the booby trap. The Enterprise is able to steer out of the booby trap. Um, there's a common theme. And so, um, the opening scene was really the main character's introduction. What's his arc theme? And in some sense that parallel, that that's the same scent, that's the same theme, but expressed in a different way in the next scene, 
uh, in the, the objective story plot line that's introduced in the next scene about the booby trap that involves all the characters. So uh, I wanted to talk to you about that and share that with you. Uh, and I'll make this short. Um, so you should see me next probably in either the um, one about the Star Trek timeline or about my note-taking thing. Probably about my note-taking thing because that would be short. So I'll see you next time. Bye.